within our hearts, within our souls. Come, O oh God, with healing power, renew us. Come, O oh come, Emmanuel, open our hearts, renew us. Come. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. Welcome to this Sunday's Mass for this fourth Sunday of the season of Advent for 2020. We're just under a week before we celebrate Christmas, and we have these beautiful readings that actually really help us and center us on what Christianity is, what God's love really is, how he wants to be in relationship with us in our lives, to help us in our lives wherever we may be at this time. I welcome you wherever you may be at this uh, Mass and bring upon this altar any and all of your attentions, including our continual prayers for this pandemic affecting both here in Australia and overseas. As usual in the season of Advent, we have this Advent wreath. And I'm now going to light the fourth purple candle. Well, actually, Barbies. Lord Jesus, you established the house of David to be secure forever and from which the Saviour would be born. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Lord Jesus, you alone are wisdom and as St. Paul declares, you will give us the strength to live the gospel. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Lord Jesus, you sent the angel Gabriel to give the good news to Mary so that she would bring Jesus into the world through the power of the Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, made by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated wherever we may be this Sunday, to listen to the word of God. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Once David had settled into his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all the enemies surrounding him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, Look, I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go and do all that is in your mind, for the Lord is with you. But that very night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus the Lord speaks, Are you the man to build me a house to dwell in? I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be leader of my people Israel. I have been with you on all your expeditions. I have cut off all your enemies before you. I will give you fame as great as the fame of the greatest on earth. I will provide a place for my people Israel. I will plant them there and they shall dwell in that place and never be disturbed again. Nor shall the wicked continue to oppress them as they did in the days when I appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give them rest from all their enemies. The Lord will make you great. The Lord will make you a house. And when your days are ended and you are laid to rest with your ancestors, I will preserve the offspring of your body after you and make his sovereignty secure. I will be a father to him and he a son to me. 
your house and your sovereignty will always stand secure before me and your throne be established forever. The word of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. Through all ages my mouth will proclaim your truth. Of this I am sure, that your love lasts forever, that your truth is firmly established as the heavens. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. I will establish your dynasty forever and set up your throne through all ages. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. He will say to me, You are my Father, my God, the rock who saves me. I will keep my love for him always. For him my covenant shall endure. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Glory to him who is able to give you strength to live according to the good news and in which I proclaim Jesus Christ, the revelation of a mystery kept secret for endless ages, but now so clear that it must be broadcast to pagans everywhere to bring them to the obedience of faith. This is only what the scripture has predicted and it is all part of the way the eternal God wants things to be. He alone is wisdom. Give glory therefore to him through Jesus Christ for ever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the servant of the Lord. May his will for me be done. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. He went in and said to her, Rejoice, so highly favored, the Lord is with you. She was deeply disturbed by these words and asked herself what these greetings could mean. But the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favor. Listen, you are to conceive and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. Mary said to the angel, But how can this come about, since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, The angel answered, And the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow. And so the child will be holy and will be called Son of God. Now this too. Your kinswoman Elizabeth has in her old age herself conceived a son. And she whom people called Baron is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, said Mary. Let what you have said be done to me. And the angel 
left her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. With less than a week to the Christmas festivities, these readings of this fourth Sunday of Advent Year B are very important. They come to the kernel of why we are celebrating Christmas shortly and also why Christmas is actually related to Easter as well. What is the kernel of our faith? A relationship. A relationship between God and ourselves. And God wants to be in relationship with you and me. Christianity is very different, really, from the other, what we call, religions of the world. The other religions use what we call natural religiosity. What is natural religiosity? It is humankind, man and woman, wanting to reach out to God because they find in their lives many difficulties, many problems, many things they don't understand, many things beyond their control. And they think if they can get in touch with the one that is in control, a deity, a God, maybe this God will be favourable on them and grant them their request. Often I call this making deals with God. But Christianity, and from its basis and root, Judaism, are very different. It's the other way around. God wants to be in relationship with you and me, with humanity, through all the ages. And that's what he's been doing all through the history of of humanity. He called these people many, many millennia ago, three, four millennia ago, to be his special people, which today are called the Hebrew or the Jewish people. He entered into them with covenants, reaching out to Abraham and the other patriarchs, to Moses. And that Moses is very important for this first reading from the second book of Samuel. Because this second book of Samuel speaks of a presence of God in the ark of God. Moses, after he had got the people out of slavery in Egypt, they got to Mount Sinai. He went up Mount Sinai, spoke with God, and came down the mountain with these, what we call the Ten Commandments, these ten words of life that the Jews often talk about, written by the finger of God on these tablets of stone. These tablets of stone, they put into this box. There's a beautiful description about it all in the Old Testament. And this box, which also contained some of this food, this manna that God provided for them to feed them for these 40 years in the wilderness, was another tangible sign that God was amongst this people, in relationship with this people. But even though he's in relationship with his people, he was still in many ways a bit distant, a bit distant. The ark had its purpose for a time. It still existed at the time of King David, a few hundred years later. And David, in a way, had a good idea. Because there had been a nomadic people going from place to place, not just during these 40 years, but all through their history, the ark was always very mobile. It was housed in an open tent. And people could go in and consult God in the presence of this ark. David thought, look, the Lord has supplied me many blessings in my life, including a beautiful place to live, a beautiful palace, beautiful food, servants, I'm king, and this precious sign of God is in a a mere tent. But it was good that he was speaking with the, the prophet Nathan because they did something important. They listened to God. And God said to them, no, it's not your time to make me a house. That will happen in the generation after you, in the time of Solomon. Here's the one to build me 
a house for my ark, my presence, to remain. And so Solomon arranged and built the first temple in Jerusalem. And in the Holy of Holies, they put this Ark of the Covenant. It was there a few hundred years, and when the invaders, it disappeared from history, which is an important thing because often people saw it was a talisman, a powerful talisman. It accompanied the people of Israel in battles, which they often won, not always, according to the will of God. But God had made a promise, which we heard in this first reading. Look, one day... One of your ancestors will be the most important person for the world. And we see this coming about in the gospel today, this beautiful gospel from Luke of the Annunciation. The angel Gabriel comes to this virgin young girl called Mary in Nazareth and starts really the tangible fulfillment of this promise of God wanting to be in relationship with all of humanity. Because there's a problem with this relationship. And that problem is sin, rebellion. And sin always causes death and has to be paid with a price of a life. And God, as usual, reaching out to humanity, provides a solution in his son. His son, whose birth we will celebrate shortly in the feast of Christmas. That God loves us and the world so much He becomes one of us to provide a solution so that we can be in relationship with God and God with us. With God inviting us, not for God to do our will, but inviting us that we do God's will. A very important distinction. This yes of Mary to the angel was the most important event of the world. Because this yes meant she fell pregnant with God, with the Son of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. The sacrifice for our sins, the one that was going to die in our place so that we can have forgiveness and healing, that we can be in relationship with God and with each other. This is the most important yes, as I said, has changed the world. And so we continue the story. She fell pregnant, went through this pregnancy. Jesus Christ was born, which we will celebrate in a few days' time. He grew up in the family of Nazareth, learnt a lot about his people through both his parents because his mother Mary was actually a well-educated woman as well. He started his mission, announcing the coming of the kingdom of God, God wanting to come even closer, including to the ones on the margins of society, the destitute, prostitutes, tax collectors, big sinners, as well as others as well, even the heart of hearts. Of course, the authorities didn't like this message of mission of Jesus. And then we have the events of Easter, the passion, the condemnation of Jesus, an innocent man, an innocent victim, an innocent sacrifice, which had to be so. He was executed on the cross and he rose from the dead. In his death, he's destroyed death forever. Our sins are forgiven. We can really be in relationship with with God through his Son. And he gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit given at Pentecost. That is really God who is with us. I'm always taken by the name from the Old Testament of Emmanuel. In fact, we heard it in one of the, I think on the Friday readings for the Mass, in one of the readings, Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God is with us. God is with us because God loves us. God wants to be in relationship with us personally as well as collectively. And he's given us the Holy Spirit that really is God within us, given to us in our baptism. So these are beautiful words that really show us how much God loves us. But we are free. Do we want to be in relationship with the Lord? The Lord invites us every morning. Do you want to be in relationship with me? Well, ask for help. Ask what is God's will. Ask for what we need to do God's will, not our will. 
God is very different from us, brothers and sisters. We have good ideas and it's great. But like David and Nathan, we need to check with God before we put them into effect. And we walk this walk of faith. Christianity, basis of Christ, who is the mediator and the one that cleared the way so that we can be in relationship with God. And God helps us also to be in relationship with each other. This is what we are going to be celebrating at Christmas. And you see how wide it is, wide it is, this beautiful gift of the relationship the Lord wants to give us that we call faith. Wherever you may be this uh, Sunday of Advent, I invite you to stand if you're able and let's proclaim our faith today with this more ancient creed of the Church, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, earth, and in in Jesus Christ, Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, we recall Mary's acceptance of the will of God. Loving God, your faithful people gather now, ready to offer you the prayers of their hearts and the desire to do your will. For the church throughout the world, that in the midst of natural disasters, the corona pandemic, persecution and poverty, Catholics everywhere will endeavour to be the face of Christ to all who suffer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who lead us in parish ministry, that they will be abundantly blessed as they bring people to know and love Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For all families, as they anticipate the joy of Christmas during these challenging times. That as they reflect on the future of the Church in Australia and immerse themselves in the plenary council, they will remember Mary's yes to God and her trust that the Spirit of God would be with her during uncertain times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For Peyton, Desmond, Colt and Bobby, who will be baptised this weekend, that like John the Baptist, they will come to know Jesus as Christ the Saviour. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick in our families and our community, especially those who have no one to pray for them, that our healing God will bless and comfort them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Ma Joan, Kathleen Spencer recently deceased, and Tony Dottillo, and all those whose anniversary occur at this time, merciful God, grant to those who have died eternal rest and comfort those who mourn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also bring to the table of the altar of love our own prayers and petitions for this Sunday. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal God, may we be like Mary and confirm ourselves to your will. And as we offer you our prayers, we ask that we will be given the grace to accept your will for us. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands have become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Father, may this water and wine from the shame of the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to show in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands, hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'll be using the second preface of Advent with the third Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It's by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. you. 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Mary of the Cross, Maculip, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Christopher, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give a kind admittance to your kid. They have been home to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that you have served. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our o Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, the power, and the and glory are yours now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Wherever we may be this Advent Sunday, fourth Sunday of Advent, let us offer each other in a dignified way 
a sign of peace. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Wherever you may be this Advent Sunday, knowing, know that you receive with love Christ into our lives. Christ who is the sacrifice. Christ who makes the way for us to be in relationship with the Lord our God who has created us in love. Christ is also the way that we, through the Lord, helping us to be in relationship with each other. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My mighty God bless you, the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go glorify the Lord with your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.